Hey guys, how you doing? Chris Rod, Sun City Lawn Care. Today we're gonna to be talking about April Lawn Care. As you guys all know, it's April. <laughs> it's springtime. Uh, God, the weather's getting warmer. I'm over here in El Paso, Texas. It's the westernmost city in the state of Texas. Uh, things are blooming. We got the vegetable garden going. The grasses are starting to turn green. And it's time to talk April Lawn Care. We got some do's, some don'ts, and we've also got some trouble spots we're going to talk about today, so y'all stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So we just got through getting the lawn cut, trimmed, edge, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> we got it cleaned up. So it's April, guys. I want to wish you guys a happy Easter, by the way. I hope you guys are out there doing your thing, enjoying your family day. We've already done that this morning. So now, time for some lawn care, some garden care, guys. If you get a quick second, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Really helps me with this YouTube algorithm, guys. I know about 90% of y'all ain't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button, do me a favor. Um, so let's talk about April lawn care, okay? Uh, some of you guys up north, you're probably getting rid of the snowfall. Maybe you on the you know California area, you get these crazy rains and things are starting to melt away. It's starting to get springtime in your area. Things are starting to emerge and grow and we're starting to see a transition, okay? Now is the time and your opportunity to really get into the lawn. If you haven't already done some of the applications, for example, early spring pre-emergent or cycle your irrigation to get the water running, some of those things you need to go ahead and get started, okay? Pre-emergent application for you guys up north. If you didn't have the opportunity early February or you just guys, you have too much snowfall if you're up north and you can't do pre-emergent at that point in time, now's the time to get it down it's springtime guys things are active it's april lawn care season let's get with the program all right so what we're talking about today um we're just going to do a walkthrough of my lawn see how things are going if you followed my channel at all you guys have know we've already conducted a soil test we got those results back i showed you guys some of those results okay and what we discovered was we finally were able to bring down our pH to an optimal range and all of our macros and micros are at the optimal range, okay? However, our calcium and phosphorus, phosphorus is still a little high and our calcium is through the roof. Am I concerned about that? None whatsoever, none, zero, zilp, zitch. So um, the other aspect of that analysis we got back was our na our salt levels were high okay and that could be kind of typical inside of a sandy soil system salt levels are high uh, calcium's high magnesium slows things of that nature so we're talking about my lawn what we're doing as far as applications go for the 2023 season so when you get a soil test that's step one guys it's really step one what it does is it helps you save money long term okay and it helps you know what products to apply to your lawn okay or even your garden your vegetable beds for that matter okay but this is a lawn care channel let's talk lawn care today so i told you guys earlier this year and a couple videos ago that we weren't going to be applying i wasn't going to be applying anything okay as far as fertility goes because of the soil test i know that we've got sufficient npk rates our mac our micros are sufficient as well so uh, to solve the problem based on my soil analysis is the NA, the high salt content and the high calcium. So how do we um, figure out or how do we lower calcium or how do we fix the high salt content? You know, there's that question, right? The ultimate answer is by continuing to add organic matter to my soil system. So because I was already sufficient in our nitrogen, our phosphorus and potassium, I have decided 
I'm going to go as long as possible <laughs> and I've got the itch guys and you know that itch that feeling when you're starting to realize it's springtime it's time to get out there and start cutting the grass or start doing some sort of application that itch I've had for a while now okay and because of that soil analysis we got back I understood that I shouldn't be applying anything else there was no need for it okay I can save some money right because my all my nutrients were sufficient so then I get this itch, like I gotta get out there and fertilize. I gotta do something, right? <laughs> it's a crazy feeling and only you guys that are lawn care enthusiasts really understand, okay? So what we're talking about today, again, going back to April lawn care is what can you be applying if you've got that itch and you gotta scratch it, guys? but you got a soil test back and maybe you were deficient in nitrogen or maybe you were deficient in potassium yes go ahead and put down a fertilizer product okay if you haven't already you guys are overdue okay bermuda grass here in west texas this is all it's already starting to wake up come out of dormancy um, here typically about the first and second week of april is when that transition happens okay i've had a green lawn for weeks now but that's because i also keep a really short lawn when you do that, that sunlight penetrates down to the leaf tissue, to the soil, it heats up, it heats up sooner than later. But um, I was looking back because it's Easter weekend, we were looking back at some of our Easter photos from last year. And what I had noticed was um, Easter weekend fell on like the third week of April last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the grass looked a lot different than what it does now. It was a lot fuller, thicker, a darker green. And I had already at least put down one or two applications of fertilizer last year, which is why some of those videos turned out the way they are. And I'll probably incorporate some of that here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But essentially, knowing what I know now about my soil this year, going into the new plan, the new year, what we're doing is we're prepared for what to apply, okay? So I told you guys I wasn't gonna be applying fertilizer. So today let's talk about what we can do because I got that itch to scratch. We are going to be applying Dirt Booster, okay? This is a product from Anderson's. A lot of you guys, I am sure you have heard of it by now. If you haven't, here you go. Here's a video about Dirt Booster, okay? Essentially, it's not a fertilizer, okay? What it is, it is a bag containing um, corn distillates, micro uh, fungi, all the good bacteria that we need inside of our soil systems, okay? Uh, it's also got the humic and the biochar inside of it, okay? Biochar deri derived from wood. Wood burned without oxygen, that's what biochar is, okay? And the humic acid, enhancing the humate layer that's already on the whole freaking planet. I'm going to be applying that. That is not nitrogen. It is not phosphorus. There's no potassium. It's all good organic bacteria, fungi, humic, biochar. It's all of that. And this is what it looks like right here. Um, when you get this product, okay, you can get it on Amazon. I'm not pitching it. I'm not selling it. What I'm telling you is what I'm applying, okay? And the reason why I'm applying it is I've already expressed adding organic material to our soil because of our soil analysis that we got back. That was the end result to help lower our salt content so that we have H2O water penetration. You can also do the aeration, which is gonna be another video, whole another video, I'll talk to you guys about that later. But today we're gonna to be adding organic material here in April, April lawn care. Now, this particular product, okay, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to feed and induce the micro uh, microbial activity inside the soil system in a lawn. Normally, uh, when this product first came out, what we're talking about is a lot of gardening, okay? And gardening, I do a lot of, that's a whole nother video, do a lot of those as well. But adding that and introducing those microbes into the soil system is super beneficial to the soil. So if you guys aren't familiar with what's called the nitrogen cycle, essentially when you guys are fertilizing your lawn, you're adding that nitrogen, okay? Um, or when you're cutting your grass, like you saw me doing earlier, and we leave those clippings, there's a process that's referred to as the nitrogen cycle, where when you leave those clippings and that material decomposes and the microbes in the soil 
eat the plants that you leave or the grass clippings that you leave, that decomposition process is what's referred to as a nitrogen cycle because it, um, when the worms eat it, it, it poops out, the uh, worm castings, all that is filtered into the microbial activity, turning the nitrates or the, um, the nitrogen into ammonium nitrate and then turning, and that the offspring of that is nitrate after nitrate and it feeds the grass plant or the vegetable garden or the flowers. It's a cycle that happens. I should do it like this, right? <laughs> it goes into the soil and comes up through the root system of the plant. The roots of the plant is what attaches to all these nitrates and all these compounds inside of our soil. So when we go and utilize an organic product that contains microbial uh, fungi, it's got the humic, it's got the biochar, we are assisting in the nitrogen cycle and the microbial activity okay that is my goal this year why because of the soil analysis guy okay i'm not gonna harp on that too much more uh let's dive into a couple problems inside the lawn first let's check the temperature today okay we are looking at a solid 62 degrees all right when that microbial activity starts to feed on the corn distillates inside of the product we're using that's what feeds the microbes. The microbes then make the nutrients that are already in the soil readily available to be uptaken by the grass. So when I look at my lawn and I see all these issues, like there's bare spots, it's not thick, it's not full, it's not dark green. Well, we haven't started feeding the lawn yet, but I'm not using a synthetic fertilizer to feed the lawn. Today, we're talking about organic matter. So in April, April lawn care, <clears throat> fertility if you haven't done so get your water running you should be cycling at least three days a week get that good inch to inch and a half of water per week you should be doing at least those two things uh, whether you decide to choose a synthetic fertilizer or organic fertilizer or organic product that contains good bacterial bacteria and fungi and humic and all that stuff into the soil you start feeding the soil now is the time to start doing that. You just saw we're at 62 degrees. A lot of that organic product starts to uh, do its job when you get that between the 60 to 70 degrees. 70 to 80 is like optimum, but we need to start introducing it into the soil so that when you reach those temperatures, it's it's there. It's in the soil and you can it's watered in. And next thing you know, you've got some taller, darker, healthier grass. All right. Um, so the last thing I wanted to touch base on, if you guys haven't already done so as far as April lawn care, when you guys are walking your property and you start seeing, you know, things like this right here, little green patches of grass, like that dark one there. Let me show you a really good one right there. That guy right there. Maybe you've got some weeds. Now is another perfect opportunity to go ahead and take care of some of these weed issues okay the reason why is because let me cut let me get down here because i'm gonna show you how to get rid of this real quick it's because of the cooler temperatures when you guys got cooler temperatures now's a really good time to go ahead and treat some of these weeds that you may have inside of our bermuda lawn for example so this is not a weed well, it, technically it's a weed because it's in my Bermuda grass, but this is clumping ryegrass left over from last year. So you have the option to pr spray a selective herbicide on this, or if it's something like a size like this, or maybe it's some crabgrass, take a blade and go at a 45 degree angle. And go ahead and cut that sucker out, guys. Okay? It's as simple as that. Look at that root right there. Long string here, okay? This is simply clumping ryegrass from our rye overseed last year. It's a little bit of the remnants left inside the Bermuda lawn. So obviously, we don't want this here. So we're going to cut it out. Or you can spray it out if you haven't already sprayed it out. If you guys put down new rye grass or sod, you can't spray it. So you got to mow it out or cut it out. This is an option, okay? So... What are we talking about? We're talking about lawn care in April. 
What should you be doing? Watering. What should you be doing? Definitely mowing. If you ain't start mowing, man, y'all gotta get out there and mow that grass. You gotta start introducing fertilizer. Your spring fertilizer application, get it down. Or if you choose to, or if you choose to do an organic program, get that organic product into your soil system. And then lastly, start taking care of them weeds. Because if you're not, they will creep and they will crawl and they will become a nuisance inside y'all's lawn. Y'all stay tuned. We got future videos coming up on various different uh, projects inside of our own lawn. And if you have any questions, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Y'all have a great Easter. Enjoy.